Hello, my dear students. Wish all of you are fine. I'm Mifa, and today our discussion topic is heat transfer. When we will read today on principles of heat transfer and methods of heat transfer. In our previous class, we already know about different uh, introductory materials of baking, ingredients, their functions, different kinds of principles. Now we are going to read about how the big product actually prepared in oven or uh, different kinds of heating methods. So first of all, we have to know about what is heat transfer. So there is a word heat and there is a word transfer. What do you think? What it can be? There, that means if there is a word is transfer, that means something will transfer and it will be heat and it will be a process actually what kind of process it is actually a dynamic process where it transferred how from one body to another cooler body that means it is a dynamic process that will give you rate of heat transfer from a higher body or heater body to a cooler body. You can also say from a high temperature to a low temperature. And this temperature difference will give you the result of rate of heat transfer. The greater the difference, you give the greater result. Okay. And there are some ways of that, that how heat will be transferred. So there is three ways. You already know about that. You read actually in your HSC that how heat are transfer, we will just read it again and we memorize it again. That is first of all conduction, how that is through direct contact, then convection, that is through fluid movement, and third of all, that is our radiation or electromagnetic waves. And for better understanding of that, we'll go to this link. So you will be more clear about that. So please go to this link. And now we can just check a figure here. That just describes us in short the whole process. It is called conduction. That means whenever your hand is come to direct contact of it, it is just moved from this utensil to your hand. And this is called the conduction process. And during the convection process, the fluid of this utensil is just move upward and downward. And then this heat is just transferred from one molecule to one mo another molecule and the whole fluid just heated. That is called a convection process. In case of radiation, it's no need any kinds of media. So, in radiation process, the heat can go in every direction. That is, in case of radiation, heat can go upwards, it can go downwards or sidewards. But in case of convection, it will be go only upwards and downwards. And in case of conduction, it will just need a direct contact. So that is the basic difference between our convection, convection and radiation which you are clear about your basic thinking and we, now you can rememorize your knowledge about convection, conduction and radiation. I will read in details. That is first of all, that is conduction. We already mentioned that conduction means direct contact of the molecules. Okay. And it mainly happens in solid bodies with that what happened there actually? Their collision of particles happen. That means there will be no movement of particles. Particles will, uh, will not move from one place to another. Just one particles go and vibrate another. And then it will vibrate another one. And with this collision process, conduction will happen and it will be produced. And this rate of heat transfer actually determines how the temperature difference between the food and the heating media 
another is total resistance to heat transfer that means two things actually measure this heat transfer rate one is the food and the heating media what is the distance or the temperature difference another how that media is resistance to heat and how this conduction happen that we already mentioned that one molecule vibrate and it will vibrate adjacent one and so on and this process it will be produced okay and if you go for example that is like that when you cook something in a utensil or in a in a pan in the stove then what happened the flame or electric grill just applied directly to the by the frying pan and so your frying pan just heat it and then you can finish your cooking okay and the process that is with your flame your fry pan is heated that process actually the direct contact that is called the conduction process which you are clear about conduction now there is a law there is a scientist who is named Fourier, and Fourier's law of conduction is like that actually how the heat of a heat transfer or how we can measure that rate okay so he just stated that this heat transfer is directly proportional to something what that the area of heat transfer in which area that means the area of a utensil okay that is called the area of heat transfer and the temperature gradient that means the difference of temperature okay and with reference to the thickness in the direction of heat transfer that means what will be the thickness of your utensil or what will be the thickness of your mold if you are uh, bake in oven that it will be the difference be the difference uh, of the temperature between the thickness of your mold and the area of your mold and that is the equation that is called q by del t it is the heat transmitted per unit of time then k a by x and the transfer of temperature difference of temperature actually that a is what that is area of the contact surface that means the contact surface or utensil or your molder of your baking product that is come to contact with the heating media and this t1 and t2 actually the temperature difference between hot and cold one okay that means whenever you place the molder in the oven or in a stove that means that your lower portion temperature and the upper portion temperature difference and x actually is the thickness of the material that how much thick it or how much uh, time will be taken to transfer heat from t1 to t2 we can better understand by that if you think that is a molder then that is the area of the molder and that is the one is t1 that is the outer portion and t2 is the uh, inner portion and it we can also think that that is the thickness okay how much thick that is so all of that actually determine your transfer rate of heat during conduction and second one is our convection and in our convection method actually heat transfer through a fluid and this fluid can be liquid or gas normally but if you are cook if you are cook in an oven then you will think that the fluid will be your air okay because your air moved within the oven and it will just transfer the convection heat and in convection particles just it will move particles from one place to another and it will transfer heat it will not not like conduction that is it vibrate and vibrate adjacent one then transfer the heat it the particles will move okay that means in case of oven air will move in case of fluid the fluid particles will move and how it will be moved actually there is a method there okay going to that example we just go for the method that is the method of fluid movement how whenever your heat is heating or happen that is uh, the, these molecule are the heated molecules whenever this molecule will be heated it will be go upwards okay 
and your upper molecules that will the polar one that will go downwards and by moving that fluid or that particles the whole molecule or the whole uh, sorry not molecule the whole fluid will be heated okay uh, and because why it will be settled down whenever these uh, particles will be heated it will be less dense and it will be lighter so it will just go upwards and it will more dense than that so it will go just downwards to taking that place and in that way the whole fluid will be heated by moving of the particles if you go for an example that uh, heating water in a saucepan what happened there the bottom of the pen moves upwards actually when we check that what happened the bottom of the water will be must first heated that it will go upwards then the upper words water will be go downwards and in this way the whole water will be heated and if you go for example in open then uh, we already mentioned that here is act as a fluid here so the here that is surrounding the product it will be heated first due to there is some conduction process and there is also heating media and after that whenever it will be heated it will just uh, surrounded within the oven and the cooler one then heated and with that process actually the whole process will go on and your baking product will be cooked okay and your pizza your cakes and other big items is one of the reason that is better happen in the oven than the stove. So that is uh, our conduction and convection. Now we will read another laws of convection that is called the Newton's law. So according to Newton, he just stated that the rate of heat transfer in convection is proportional to what the surface area of heat transfer with the temperature difference between the surface and the fluid so if we go for the equation that is like that that dq by dt here it is the heat transfer by convection h is the transfer coefficient and a is the heat transfer surface it will be t okay as is the heat transfer surface area okay that means your surface area will depend on a and ts will be the product surface temperature and tinf is the temperature of the bulk fluid that it will be here okay so three things will matter there one is your surface area of your mold then the surface temperature of your mold and another is the temperature of air and it is proportional to what the heat transfer rate by convection okay so it is the newton's law of convection then our last one that is radiation we already know about that radiation don't need any type of media it actually transfer heat by which electromagnetic wave okay and this wavelength between zero to infinite and radiant energy actually travels until it is interrupted by something that is the you can see your product or you can say a surface anything Whenever the radiant energy is interrupted by or a surface, it strikes to the surface. And then that surface actually absorb, reflect, and transmitted the heat. That means the radiant energy then transferred to thermal energy. And it is also one thing that is exchange of energy between two surfaces at two different temperatures that we already mentioned via something that is emission, reflection, absorption of thermal radiation. And another important thing is in case of infrared energy actually, it is supplied in baking and roasting operation. So what happened? This infrared, where from this infrared actually came from? This infrared come from the electric line or the burner or the gas that you will use for heating the oven. Okay, that means with that, the electromagnetic wave come to your oven and heating your body of the oven. And this heat then go to the, your product and it will be better cooked. And this uh, absorption actually depends on 
some uh, you can say factors okay first of all what is that surface temperature of the heating and receiving materials what is the temperature that is heating and receiving materials second one is the surface properties of the two materials these two materials that heating and receiving and third one the shape of the emitting and receiving bodies that means from where the oven shape okay and the shape of the uh, molder of yours uh, for preparing your cake or pizza it also affect the radiation process and in case of radiation there is also a law that is called stephen boltzmann equation according to him the amount of heat emitted from a radiator that mostly black body he mentioned it is calculated how using the stephen boltzmann equation what will be the equation that is q bar means the radiant energy that is the equation actually radiant energy and where sigma is the stephen boltzmann constant it's a actually a, a number that is given by or a uh, you can also say is a constant number that is given by stephen boltzmann that he used to uh, calculate that and here a is the surface area and t is the temperature of the radiator okay so you will get that radiant energy whenever you just multiply the surface area with the temperature of the radiator okay so that is actually our three equations and our conduction convection and radiation and if you go for this that how does heat energy get from the sun to the earth that is our sun that is our earth and there is no particular field between the sun and the earth so it cannot travel by conduction or by convection it can directly to the radiation and whenever this radiant energy just uh, strike that then our earth just absorb that heat and that absorb that energy and transfer it into heat so uh, that was your conduction convection and radiation i wish you clear uh, and we will discuss more in our next class and here is actually some figure is given and it work is quick checking that one two three four you have to write there which kinds of actually method applied which figure so that's for all today thank you